Greetings, pilots and drivers. There's Jimmy. He's uh, filled me in on how he wants this video produced. And uh, I, I told him I understand. Now he says, okay, you just have at it. And uh, should be good to go. So there we go. So we're in the mobile, uh, we're in the Mazda CX-9 mobile RC aircraft hangar and crawler garage. Okay, so there's my transmitter over there with the new thumb steering attachment. Thumb steering. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Okay, so we got that going on. Cool. And we got... Uh... Okay, so as you know from the title of this uh, video here, this is part two of my uh, desire and plan to attempt to make a do-it-yourself uh, winch. For this truck, Axial SCX10 255 Ford F100, custom aged vintage baby blue paint job, FPV camera inside, looking at the windshield, driver's seat view, got a camper going on here. I'm going to do a full scale interior on the camper. Right now, she has no interior. All right. Uh, so, anyway, the winch project. So, here's the deal. Here's a, a, a motor, an axial motor. Uh, let's see if it says axial on here somewhere. I think it does. Well, anyway, there's the axial logo. Yep, so here's an axial motor. And uh, my plan is... Okay, let me just back up. In the first video, I said what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a winch system where I used a second motor, just like the one that drives the truck. And I was going to run two motors off the throttle channel on the receiver so that when I hit forward on uh, the truck, you know, the one that the motor uh, that drives the truck itself will, will activate and go forward. And, and the one that I've uh, attached to it, uh, slaved onto it, basically, will also go forward. And uh, so the drive motor will go forward and then the slave second motor will, will turn in a direction that will uh, tighten the winch, right? Anyway, let, let me, uh, so let me, let me actually, uh, Let's see what I want to do right here. Yeah, so in a nutshell, I wanted to try to run two motors in the truck using a Y cable to run two motors off of one uh, receiver and uh, a channel and one uh, 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 ESC, right? And then it was going to be connected along with the, the, the throttle, uh, the, the truck motor. So when I hit, again, when I hit the throttle forward on the truck, the motor uh, propelling the truck would uh, would go forward. And the a second motor attached would go forward too, and I would have that drive my winch, and I'd have a switch. So I'd have the switch off, the second motor is dormant. Turn the switch on, second motor becomes active. And if I go uh, reverse on it, it, it allows me to pull out the, uh, the cable that's attached to a pulley that's attached to the shaft of the motor, and so on. So uh, that's basically where I was at, but I had a lot of it, a lot of it not, was not yet figured out. Um, so here we go. So this, here's what we're going to do now. So I got this item from, from uh, Amazon for six bucks. So let's open this up. My little intro explanation just now might have been a little bit, <laughs> not the clearest in the world, but it'll make sense here in a second. Now I'm opening the Amazon package with my teeth. There we go. There we go. All right. So in here I purchased... Now, and also in the first video, I mentioned that, you know, the only decent system that I've been, ever been able to find for uh, for a winch on an RC uh, crawler is a WARN, W-A-R-N. I've tried the ones that you get on Amazon from China where they're very inexpensive, and I've never had one that worked worth beans. Uh, my experiences with, the, with, with any winch other than a WARN, W-A-R-N for RC, is that it's very very poor quality and the reviews if you look at the reviews on amazon of those winches you'll see a, a very great many dissatisfied customers so so i had to steer away from anything uh, from amazon made by anybody other than warren and for warren winches you gotta it's all separate parts you gotta have a, a the winch itself which is a couple hundred bucks you gotta have the controller which is a, about a hundred bucks you gotta have the remote control unit which is another hundred or so bucks it's pretty dang expensive more than i want to spend for a winch, okay, and then so the, that's that's half of my reason for trying to do a do do it yourself winch system. The other half is I thought it would be fun to see if I could figure out a way to, to do it and make it be you know really cool. So lots of problems to solve. Okay, so anyway, 
So as I said a minute ago, I was going to try to run two motors off the one ESC and receiver ch channel. And uh, one would be to propel the truck, as now. And then the second one would be to would be the winch motor. Right. Simply put, it would be the winch motor. And I'll go into more detail on that in a minute. So that was the plan. So now, uh, so let's look at what I just got. Uh, so we got this here. Let's see what's the, there we go. So you can see there's a hook there, uh -huh. and there's a spool there. See that a spool, and there's a length of cable. Yep. So let's open up this here. Let's get this uh, Amazon packaging out of the way. This is normally Jimmy's little place in here, but it's, it's being used as a part work work area here. All right. So we're gonna open up this here. All right, so let's pour these contents out onto here. All right. And I don't want to misplace any screws. That's for da dang sure. All right, so there everything's come out. Can we get some focus? We can. Yes. Okay. So it says uh, made in China. And I guess that's the part number in the center there. And it says... One tenth scale remote control accessory. Okay, that's <laughs> what it says. Basically, all right. So that's still fine. So here's what we get. So the first uh, part of my project and idea, and this idea may not work out at all. I'm not. I'm not claiming that this is going to work out. It's purely uh, experimental. So my idea is that uh, first of all, so we'll, there's a number of different elements. How to run the motor. And, and control the winch and stuff like that. But we're going to just start with getting the motor ready to become a winch motor. Getting the actual, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, motor that drives the truck. We're turning that into a winch motor. So that's the first step. So, so we've got, uh, okay, so there's the motor. Now we'll put the motor down. So, so there's the motor. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, I think, is to see uh, if the spool here... Focusing, yes. Okay, we got to see if the spool here is going to fit the shaft of the motor. Now you can see it's way big here, this hole, and the other hole is a lot smaller. And it's also let's see, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, and it's smooth. It's smooth on the inside. There's no, uh, there's no. Uh, what am I trying to say? There's no tines in there or whatever to, to for a. This this isn't meant to slip onto a gear apparently, but I'm not sure. So here, let's figure out uh, if and how this will fit on the shaft of this motor. All right, so if we put the, uh, you can also see that this has an indented part here. It's indented and then there's a hole. That part there is uh, just a big hole, bigger hole. All right, so let us just see. Now this hole is not too far off from the size of the shaft there. So let's put that on first and see what that does for us. All right, so we'll just put this on like this. And yes, I'm holding my camera with one hand. This could work out uh, if the, uh, the oh, folks, I think. Whoa, let me switch hands. This could work out, folks, because this there's not a, a bunch of play on here. There's not a whole bunch of play on here, okay. And I can fix it. Whoa, I can fix it so that this will fit on there uh, snug with no play. But see, that's what we got there. It's focusing, focusing, yes. Okay, see, so that's what we got there. I took the pulley they gave me and put it on this uh, motor shaft here. That's right. Thumbnail photo. I'll screenshot this. <laughs> okay, so that's the idea. So now we've got the motor, uh, the uh, winch motor, what I'm uh, trying to convert into a winch motor. We've got that. Uh, got the pulley on there. Now, here's the next thing I would do. You can see a tiny, tiny hole. See, focus. Come on, make it focus on this. I'm not getting down there. Oh, it's trying so hard. All right, folks, should I give up? I mean, it won't focus on anything now. There. There we go. We got focus. Oh, my gosh. Center screen. Uh, we can put, run a screw through there. Well, I was going to point out with my finger. We don't need to. Now we lost our focus, haven't we? Okay, center screen, there's a hole. I will run a, 
screw through that hole. It looks like I can run a screw through that hole, which will hit the shaft and uh, secure that spool to the shaft. So that was my first challenge. Uh, that looks like that'll be pretty easy to do. All right, so then the next thing is going to be this cable. It's, you, know, you know what? That's not what that hole's for. I just realized that hole is for the cable. The cable to go through that hole. That's it. Yeah, I think the cable goes through this hole. I think so. It looks that way and that's and secures somehow. Yeah, that is what happens. All right, so we'll do that. As far as the uh, securing the pulley, looks like that will be a gluing situation. I'll shim it. Whoop, I'll shim it so it's really tight. But that's going to be a gluing situation, looks like. Okay, fine. And then so we just figured out that the cable goes in the little hole. All right, so then, okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So we secured the cable, uh, the pulley to the motor. Secure the pulley to the motor, and then we uh, attach the cable. Fine, we'll get this out of the way now because it's just... I'm coiling. All right. I don't know why this is having such trouble focusing, ladies and gentlemen, really. That's just stupid. Absolutely stupid. Okay, anyway. So then that gives us... Uh, okay, so we got some hardware here. Which uh, we got in focus. Okay, we got a little tiny nut there. And a little collar. Oh, I think the collar goes inside the, the pulley. Bigger screw in our hook. And a little screw there. All right. So I'm going to put the, phone, uh, the video on pause for a second here and see what I can put together right now, and then I'll be right back. All right, folks, so I figured out, let me get a pointer. I need a pointer. I need an improvised pointing device, a uh, pen. No, how about these uh, tweezers? All right, so I found out what this little deal here is for. There we go. Focus. Yes! Okay, so what you do is you take your cable and you run it through the hole in the hook, out the other hole in the hook. No, first you run your cable through this little uh, collar here. You run it through that, from down here, through that, then through the holes in the hook, and then back through the same collar, and then you, I believe, crimp it with pliers. So I'm going to try crimping it right now, and then I'll be right back. All right, folks, so we got it crimped. I used the, uh, I got these needle-nose pliers, which are angled, and they're certainly handy, including for pulling out the body pins that are under underneath the, the, the body like on the actual but anyway uh i went ahead and used the uh, the cutting uh, you can see dead center screen the the cutting there we go i used the cutting part of the pliers here to uh carefully because i didn't want to cut through it but to carefully crimp this and you can see how well that worked yeah you can see that so we got our hook uh attached to our cable that's done now on the other end we've got the other end of the cable uh, going through this uh, spool here uh, and I have to figure out how I'm gonna uh, attach that to the spool and I think I'm just gonna tie it somehow but we're gonna see what I come up with and I'll be right back and show you what I did there all right folks Jimmy's eye view Jimmy's FPV view so all I did on the end of the cable here for the spool is I put a tiny knot on it wow it focused on the tiny knot right and so what will happen now hopefully is on this all right so see the cable and then whoop, there we go see that is that all the way through that's all the way through you see that now i'm gonna tighten that up and i'm gonna see if i can wrap this cable up on the spool and see what happens with that and i'll be right back all right folks thanks to emmy emmy thanks to jimmy's expert supervision supervision by jimmy thanks to that uh, I'm making some really good progress on this project here. So here we got our uh, servo motor, uh, we hope, set up with the spool is attached. Now it's not it's not attached uh, firmly. It's not secured. All right, it's attached, but it's not secured. But we've got our pulley, winch pulley on the motor, on the winch motor. We've got our hook attached to the winch cable. And we've got our hook attached a cable, rather. We've got a cable attached. Can we see it in there? Boy, that'd be really lucky if I could see it in there. See in there. Yes. Well, anyway, you can see how it's fitting on the shaft pretty good right there. And it is knurled right there. I can see two. So I might, I think I, this is on backwards. It is on backwards. If I get the right gear to put on the shaft, it'll fit this knurled spot here. So I'm going to switch that around. 
And uh, so the knurled part here, as you can clearly see center screen, will go on a gear that I'm going to install on this shaft. Yes, of course. So let's put it on there, and that'll simulate what we're going to end up with ultimately. Oh, ultimately. Yeah, the gear will be, yeah, right? Yeah, I got that right. So it goes on here like this. There we go. There we go. So that, that there. Let me move this away from the wires on the motor. Uh, so it looks better. Mm. Okay, there we go. So that is what we ended up with now. We've got, uh, again, our hook attached to our cable. Cable's attached to the spool. Spool's attached to the motor. Oh, it's, it, it, it focused. See, that's how it needs to go. So that's that's working out really great so far. Fantastic! All right, now uh, I've got the cable wrapped around the spool. Focusing. I've got the cable wrapped around the spool, as you can see. Let me set this down. There we go. All right, you can see dead center screen. I've got the cable wrapped around the spool all the way around, and it's a six foot. Six foot? That's what it claims to be, six foot. I'd say it's more like four foot. Three or four foot. It's pretty long, though. So as you can see, center screen, I've got the cable all the way wrapped around the uh, cable pulley on the uh, what is becoming the winch motor, I hope. I've got it wrapped around there, and then uh, I've got it securely taped in place because right now uh, the cables used to be in straight. So if I didn't have it taped in place, it would just it'll it would go sprawling and it would all come off the the the, 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 uh, the pulley. So having it uh, set uh, having it wound on there really tight. Jeez, come on. Oh, really? Phone! Focus! So, after winding it on, after winding the winch cable really tight onto the spool, I've secured it with the masking tape to uh, keep it tightly wrapped around the spool. And in that way, over some time, that cable ought to get used to being uh, wrapped around that spool and it'll relax. Right, right now, all, all it, it was straight, virtually straight. When you pull it out of the package, the cable. It's coiled up loosely, but when you pull it out, it, it, it goes it goes straight. So the cables used to be in straight, so I got it wrapped as tightly as possible around the spool. Then I've got it secured, and we'll keep it that way for a, a goodly amount of time until it uh, gets used to being wrapped around the spool. All right. And then later on, and especially after some use, then later on, of course, before I use it, I'll remove the tape. But when I do remove the tape, I think uh, the cable will be a lot more inclined to to want to be on the spool than otherwise. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so. So now I just have to get the gear. I don't have the gear. I have to figure out how I'm going to get the gear to fit in here. Uh, to fit actually on the shaft. Did I put this on wrong? I did put this on backwards. Again. Yeah, that's the knurled part right there. That's the knurled part. You can't see it, but that's the knurled part. So it'll go on like this. This. There we go. Yeah, so it'll go on just exactly like that. Okay. Um, so yeah, the next thing is I got to figure out how to secure the spool to the. Oh, I don't have to figure it out. I got to get the gear that fits the shaft and the spool, uh, and that should be all I need for this setup to be ready to, to use. All right. So here's the next deal. Now, as I said, opening in the opening of this video, I originally intended to run the two motors off of a Y cable into the receiver and off of one EAC, I later quickly realized that was probably a really poor idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power this one separately. So it'll be powered separately, but it'll still be controlled by the ESC. I'm gonna run a Y cable out of the ESC, and not, excuse me. I'm gonna run a Y cable out of the throttle receiver port. And one of those cables will go to the motor in the truck that runs the truck. And the other uh, cable on the Y cable will go to this motor which will be separately powered, and it'll have its own ESC. You follow? So, in the, uh, so the throttle port will have one cable, uh, the throttle receiver port will have one cable coming out that splits into two, and it will control the motor in the truck, and it will control the motor that's the winch motor identically. So when I hit forward on the trigger on the uh, remote control, the receiver will send that signal out to both motors. And when I hit uh, reverse on the throttle trigger, the receiver will send that signal out to both motors, right? Which is what I want. In addition, I'll have a switch. I'll have this one switched. So when I have this motor switched off, 
then the uh, the the cable leading to this motor will be will be dormant. The truck will operate just normally. It'll be running one motor off of one ESC off of the receiver throttle port. When I flip the switch on to activate this, then it'll be running both motors, and this one will be independently powered, and it'll have its own ESC. And then when this is active, it will be, it will respond identically to the controls. It will respond identically to the controls as the motor in the truck. Yes, the slave motor, if you will, the winch motor down down there, finger pointing. That's going to be the slave motor, and it will respond to the to the trigger exactly the same as the primary drive motor in the truck. That's my theory. That's my theory. Um, so there you go. That's the whole thing. So I got to get my gear. That's my next step. Get my gear. Make this ready to go. Then I have to get another ESC. Connect this to that second ESC. Make the Y cable uh, so that both the uh, primary drive motor for the truck and the winch motor so that they both go into the single uh, throttle port. Uh, once I've done that, it should work. It should be ready for testing. Now, and again, when I'm not using the winch, I, I turn this, switch this motor off. So I cruise around, cruise around, cruise around. And then when I'm going to winch, I, uh, let's see, I wonder, does this just turn? Okay, so now I dig this. This is fantastic. Now, the, the uh, when not in use, the shaft on the motor uh, spins freely, right? It doesn't focus freely, but it spins freely. Okay. Anyway, when uh, it's, it spins freely, see that? So when when this, uh, I'll take it out. See that the, the the shaft spins freely. See the shaft spins freely. I like that. So that means that when when my uh, that means that when my cable is attached, all right. When the cable is attached uh, by by way of the spool. Right when the spool is attached to the shaft, and the shaft is switched, and when the when the cable and spool are attached to the winch motor shaft, and the winch motor is switched off, well then I can pull the cable out just like you normally would, just fine. I can pull it out like that just fine, and that will turn the motor shaft, and the motor will be fine with that. Pull it out to where I want. Once I switch the winch motor on, it will then respond to forward trigger which will shorten the cable right and I could even winch backwards down an obstacle if, if for some reason I needed to by going reverse right yep and at the same time as the tires are moving in the desired direction the winch motor is the slave motor and it's doing it's mimicking the same thing so it's going to move your cable in the desired direction so everything I just said there may be a complete cockamamie bunch of uh, hooey or it might work. So, thumbnail shot, maybe. Maybe. So that's the deal, ladies and gents. Uh, yeah, that's the deal. Winch motor for the crawler. I think this is going to work. And, of course, I have to make a... Uh, anyway, that's for the thumbnail. There we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... So then the, the final thing to do after doing everything I've described in unfortunate long-winded fashion is to make a, uh, a frame and a mount for this in the in the truck I got to figure out the best place to mount this in the truck because it's going to be pulling you know uh, theoretically almost the entire weight of the truck at times so it's got to be it's got to be really solidly mounted and then I got to figure out how, how I'm going to run my cable and that'll be pretty easy um, so I reckon the winch motor might be mounted on the frame chassis back here because that's where the most room is and it's the most sturdy so i'll probably put a platform here and, and mount the winch motor up in here uh right where here yeah so we'll probably put the winch motor up around in here somewhere more or less like this okay and then our cable will run uh so our cable will be here so i'll, I'll have some I, i'll screw an eyelet see this here the, the lid for the receiver box i'll screw two eyelets in here so that my cable will run from the pulley up to and through the first eyelet, through the second eyelet. Uh, 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 I believe I'll have another eyelet, possibly on top of the steering servo, or maybe down here on the frame. Okay, then the last eyelet will be somewhere up in here, 
so that ultimately the cable will go out straight out the front bumper dead center. Yeah? Okay. So there it is. All right. I think this is going to work, folks. Again, I could be completely wrong, but I think it's going to work. All right? All right. So this is Mark and Jimmy signing off. The next video will be, uh, I think, a demonstration video of this if I'm successful. Or it will be, yeah, it will be a demonstration video. I will have built the bracket for the motor. I will have installed the I, uh, what did I just say? I, uh. Eyelets, you know, the screw-in deals with the with a, with a uh, loop on the top. You know what I mean. I will have uh, attached all the uh, cable routing hardware. Let's put it that way. I will have attached all the cable routing hardware until it goes all the way to up here. And I'm going to put something on the front bumper, the final eyelet, which will be decorative. It will be scale-looking as I can get. The final eyelet will just be right here on the back part of the bumper, and then the cable will come out through there. Okay, folks, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Six bucks. For this little setup here, yeah, so there we go. Focusing? No. How about now? Yes, now it'll focus. All right, then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. This is Mark and Jimmy. Appreciate all you in the community, and uh, we're signing off in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0.